The 2007 floods were horrendous for Pangbourne. We had over 120 homes flooded and some people were out of their properties for a good six to nine months. It was really a devastating blow. There was a big study done after the floods. We worked with the agencies to see what could be done to prevent this sort of thing happening again. And a lot of the easy wins have been done. There's no big hard engineering that works for Pangbourne. So we looked around to see what else we could do. And this is where we came upon the idea of natural flood management. This is the River Bourne. It's a tributary to the Pang. At the moment, there's hardly any water in it, but after heavy rainfall, the levels really increase very quickly, which pushes a lot of water down into the Pang itself, which can then obviously cause the flooding. The leaky dams do exactly what they say on the tin. They're, they're a structure that holds back water, but they also allow the passage of some water through them. So we're trying to emulate nature. We're slowing the flow of the river down without using hard engineering and, and concrete. Well, we're part of the uh, community of this valley, uh, and that's a problem with flooding and we wanted to do the right thing and we've worked with the Flood Forum for a long time and when they came to us and said there's this option of putting in leaky dams we were immediately attracted uh, by the idea. We've seen it work elsewhere in the country and it fits in with what we want to do. We're part of the community. In the local area we have chalk with clay overlays and the chalk is great at absorbing a load of rainfall whereas the clay just lets the rain roll over the top so then we have flash flooding in the area. This pilot project is looking at the efficiency of leaky barriers to see whether they actually can slow the flow and prevent big flood events further downstream in Pangbourne. We've used trees that we found very close to their locations, so it's all natural materials. In a time of normal rainfall and, and river flow, the water goes underneath the dam, not being affected. Whereas once we get high rainfall, the dams come into operation, so the water level rises, the water's held back, and this cumulative effect of holding back water really slows the flow. So instead of all the water rushing into the, into the pang at the same time, that peak of, of rainfall is really slowed down. To measure how effective the leaky barriers are, here at this site we have a time-lapse camera and we also have level sensors so they both do essentially the same thing the time-lapse camera is giving us a visual update on the flow of the river whereas the sensors themselves are giving us numerical data that we can evaluate what we expect to find with the data is that the leaky barriers are quite efficient at mitigating flooding for small and frequent flood events as opposed to really large flooding events what we will then be able to do with that data is to encourage other pilot projects to do more leaky barrier research elsewhere So using natural flood management means that we're using natural materials and there's lots of benefits to that. For the biodiversity, there's lots of deadwood that we're leaving in the wood and close to the river. And this means that there's loads of habitat for deadwood invertebrates, which can then be fed on by bats and birds. So it really is increasing the whole biodiversity of, of the woodland. What we'd like to see from this is other landowners taking up the, um, the opportunity to put natural flood management on their land as well. And for this to be more widespread across the country. It has to be the way forward. I'd really encourage other landowners and indeed other community groups like local flood forums to, to look at this as an alternative. There's never enough public money for big flood defences. This is natural and it's beneficial to the environment. We want to see as many people as possible uh, doing this kind of scheme.